Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about context managers. This will be the first part in a, well, I don't want to say how many videos, but a multi-part series on context managers because I don't think I'm going to be able to cover all of that in the whole video today. Uh, but I'm, I'm tentatively calling the title of this one Context Managers the Hard Way. And I'm going to go over the low-level way of implementing a context manager. Uh, we'll follow up in another video and show you a much, much easier way to implement them. Uh, so let's jump into that. Okay, so the idea behind a context manager is it is something that can do something before and after a block of code. And the way you use a context manager is with the with statement, uh, which you might have seen um, for several things in Python. Let me actually show you the most common example that you would see a with statement for in a Python file. And that is opening a file. Um, so here's an example where I open a file and open is, open is a built-in uh, function and it is also a context manager. Uh, now what I've done here, and I'll actually write this out as file name, um, I have you know opened a file descriptor in write mode and this with statement says that while this block of code is running, this file is opened. Um, and once that block exits, so you know once there's a dedent after here, so let's say we do you know print done, uh, once this indent stops, the file that was opened here will be closed. And so what the with statement does is it ensures that only during that block of code, this file is open. Um, and you'll notice here that I've used as to assign the return value of open. We'll actually go over how this bit of uh, magic works later. Um, and before the with statement existed, so in like Python, I think 2.3, you used to have to write something like this, f equals open file name w, oops, and we gotta put quotes in the right place, and you would do try f.write hello, hello world, and then you would do finally uh, f.close. And so in a way, this, this open statement is very similar, or this with statement is very similar to this try finally here. Of course, this is you know a little bit more readable and much more compact. Uh, the other thing about with statements, and this is you know not so advanced, but we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the advanced stuff soon, uh, is you can combine multiple context managers uh, using a comma. So if you want to open, say, multiple files here, open file name two, in write mode also, I forgot the double quote again, as F2, uh, you can do this as well. Hello, hello world two. And what this will do is it'll open this one, and then it'll open this one, and then it'll run this block of code, then it will close this one, and then it will close this one. Uh, you can think of this here as, you know, the same as doing two context managers and then just having an indented block like that. So you can you can kind of think of those two as, as the same code here. Um, but there's some special syntax for this. And also, kind of a, a little bonus tidbit about Python 3.9, which is kind of an Easter egg, not really uh, mentioned anywhere. You're actually going to be able to do this in Python 3.9, which is to have, you know, a tuple-like syntax uh, with implicit continuation here and have trailing commas here. Uh, you can't actually do this in older versions of Python, but the new parser enables this. But anyway, enough of that. That's the with statement. Uh, let's talk about context managers, which is how this open sort of thing is implemented under the hood. Um, and what a context manager allows you to do is it kind of has three steps to it. One is initialization. The other is um, entering, which is where you acquire a resource, and the last is exiting, where you close that resource, uh, optionally suppressing exceptions. And the way you do that is with a special class. So we're going to actually make, well, actually, let's run this fi Python file since, uh, oops, Python 3, and I forgot double quote somewhere. Oh, right, right, Python 3.9. <laughs> of course, we're using the new syntax there. And I forgot a colon here. Okay, cool. Anyway, so you can see now file name and file name. Oh, I should have done F2. <sighs> Silly example, but we'll, we'll show it actually working. Cat file name and cat file name too. Anyway, um, so I want to show you an example where we're going to build our own context manager. And we're going to do it as a context manager class. And we're going to kind of have three steps to it. So we're going to make our class context. 
uh, and we're going to have an init. Print in initialization. Now, I find it really important to not do any side effects as part of your context manager's initialization. Um, you know, usually context managers are used for managing resources, so like opening a network connection or opening a file or doing something like that. And I, I find it best to not have any side effect in, in it um, and leave all the side effects to double under enter. Um, which brings us to our next part, which is double under enter. This is where you do the work that happens at the beginning of that block, so right before something happens. And the return value here is whatever gets returned as that as. So we could do something like, I don't know, let's say we return a tuple of int int arbitrarily. Um, just to show you an example. Uh, so this is kind of the before code. This is where you would acquire your resources or you know open your connection or other stuff like that, or you know modify a global variable, something like that. Um, if you're doing like mocking or, or, or something. Although I would suggest using the built-in, you know, from unit test import mock, and there's there's a mock.patch.object uh, or mock.patch that is also a context manager that will do kind of global monkey patching for you. That's another standard library thing there. But anyway, <laughs> let's not get distracted here. Um, we've said here that we're going to return a tuple int int, so let's do that. Let's say, I don't know. 42 and I don't know, 99. <laughs> uh, so that's that's the enter method. Uh, let's actually type annotate everything just so we're thorough, even though that's optional on double under init. And the last part of this puzzle is the double under exit function. Def exit. And this one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, it takes three parameters. And the first is the type, which is an optional type any. From typing import type, from typing import optional, and we'll also get any in here. Uh, the second is the instance of the exception, and this is also optional. Uh, actually, this should be base exception, not any, uh, because exceptions must inherit from base exception, so that's easier to do. Base exception is built in. Uh, the inst uh, is an instance of base exception. And the last is the traceback. And the traceback here, whoops. The traceback here actually comes from the types module. <laughs> traceback type, I think that's how it's uh, done. Optional traceback type. And uh, this exit function can return several things. Uh, it can either return a Boolean or it can return none. So usually you write this as optional bool. We'll talk about what that means in a second. And this exit method will be called in two different scenarios. One, if it's an exception that's bubbling up, this tp inst and tb will be populated with the current bubbling exception. Um, or if it exits normally, so a non-exceptional case, these will all be none. And so that's where the optional comes into play. And this exit method can choose whether to suppress an exception or it can you know, allow that exception to re-raise. If it returns none or false, uh, it will just allow the exception to continue to bubble, so it's not going to do any exception handling here. Uh, but if it returns true, then it can catch exceptions. So we might do something like, um, I don't know, maybe this context manager explicitly catches, I don't know, class foo error, uh, runtime error, and if is if is instance inst foo error uh, return true. And of course we want to do code that's going to happen in the after block or after the code here so we can kind of see the before and after going on here. Um, but in this case, we're going to say like, if it's a foo error, we're going to return true. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to leave this exception unhandled. So we're just going to return either none or false. Either of them are fine. Um, it doesn't actually matter. The uh, um, exception handling stuff treats none and false the same. Any falsy value, I think, actually. Uh, we, will, we will test that in a second, though. Uh, but you can see here, this is how I would call this. Uh, we can do with ctx, with ctx. So this will do the initialization, and it will do the enter at the same time. So often you'll do initialization and um, enter 
both at the same time. I'll show you a way that we can separate that in a second. And we can assign this with an as. So let's say this is x1, x2. You'll see we print inside. You'll see we also can print uh, x1 and x2. I'm using a, a little syntax from Python 3.8 for special f strings here. And you'll see if we run this now, Python 3t.py, uh, tuple is not defined. From typing import tuple. Get all the other ones, hopefully. Okay, so a lot, a lot happened here. Let's let's uh, step or look at it line by line. So first we ran this CTX. That's going to cause this initialization here. Then we ran this enter method, which ran this before. Uh, then we're inside this block, so we've assigned these two values. You can see that we print inside. Then we print the values of x1 and x2. Those got assigned from this return value up here. And then finally this block exits, and so we print this after here. Now we didn't do anything uh, suppressing or not. Print suppressing, uh, print not suppressing. As you can see here, we're also not suppressing in this case, because we, we not only didn't have an exception here, um, let's actually put that in here. Uh, inst equals, uh, you'll see that we got inst as none, so we didn't, we didn't actually receive any exception here. Now, I'm gonna show two things at once here. <laughs> You can actually assign this context um, outside of here before initial or before context. And let's actually comment this out so we don't need that to run and confuse us. Uh, and you can take an already initialized context manager and pass it in as the width statement here. Uh, so we can do with CTX, we can ignore the return values here. So we don't actually need to take the values from enter. We can just let them be. Uh, and let's demo raising an exception here. So we're going to raise a foo error. And you'll see now when we run this, uh, let's actually put the exception in here as well so we can see it. Inst equals. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So you can see that we initialized this. We printed this before, so we didn't run any of the double under enter setup code here. We just, you know, <laughs> printed something. Then we entered this context. That's what caused this before to happen. We ignored these returned values this time just because I wanted to show you that that's possible. Uh, inside, we print boom. Then we raised our exception. And that went our, into our after block. And we can see that we suppressed this foo error here. Now, if I were to change this to some other value, so let's say just, you know, runtime error wet, uh, that will allow it to continue to re-raise here. And you can see that we didn't suppress this. We but not suppressing, and we got something that was not none here. Uh, but that's kind of context managers the hard way. I usually find that these are kind of annoying to write, and I always forget the argument types here. Um, I will show you in the next video a way to make context managers a little bit easier, uh, but this video is you know, getting kind of long, and I kind of wanted to keep this to be the low-level nitty-gritty stuff. Uh, the other kind of neat thing about context managers is you can somewhat simulate how this with statement works. This with statement is just syntax sugar. Um, it doesn't exactly work like this, so don't don't treat this as um, you know the actual implementation. You can check out I think it's pep. I don't know. There's a pep for context managers that talks about this. Uh, but the way that this with statement kind of works is roughly similar to this. Um, Let's see, enter equals tp ctx. Let's actually comment this out. Dot enter and then exit equals tp ctx dot exit. So what it does is it grabs the two functions before it runs the block. Uh, then we're gonna do try. We're gonna run the code inside of here. We can do try print boom, raise runtime error wet. Uh, and then we're gonna do accept base exception. And this is what's gonna handle the actual exception handling code. Um, and so that's gonna do, let's see, sys.exceptioninfo. That comes from the sys module. And this is the three tuple that you see in the exit method up here. So that's what these three types are. sys.xinfo does that for us. Um, suppressed equals uh, exit 
this. So we're gonna call that exit method. Uh, if not suppressed, then we're going to raise. And in the other case, when we don't catch an exception, we're gonna call exit with none, none, none. This is kind of what it looks like. It's not exactly like this. There's, it's, it's a lot more complicated than this, but this is kind of how you can think about it. Um, and you'll see if we, TP is not defined. Oh, right. <laughs> T-Y-P-E, not T-P, what am I doing? Uh, exit is missing one positional argument, T-P. Uh, oh. We also need to pass the instance into these, I forgot. Uh, so it looks like this. Okay, so this is very similar to what we had before. Uh, of course, we can leave this print here as well. So you can see that this you know, not suppressing is looking very, very similar to what we had here. Um, and if we were to change this to foo error, foo error, you can see that we should suppress this. And so you can kind of kind of see how that works. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's context managers the hard way. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.